four minutes. Oh my gosh. So, intro. <laughs> this is officially my self care, self love, receiving God's love, the capacity of God error. I know that's a lot, but in order for me to be able to really just open up my heart and receive what God really has for me, which I have never done in my life at 36 years old, I mean, I'll be 37 in December, like five months, and when I tell y'all I'm just in this era of like, I just want to live my life. Like, I feel like that'll be my breath of fresh air. You know, like, that'll be me actually breathing. I know people go through stuff, and even me just recently going through things, and I, the question was, like, when will I ever breathe? Like, when will I ever feel like my head is above water? But as I mature with God and as I mature in my thinking and my mindset I'm like that question can be answered in so many different ways just depending on how you see life and so I'm like when will I breathe I'll breathe actually let me change it I am breathing because now I am walking alongside God and I have given him a complete yes and that does not depend on what I think life looks like, but that depends on how I am, how my relationship is with God and how intimate I am with him to receive his love. Like, I'm truly his bride and he is my husband, like y'all. And I mean truly, because let me tell y'all what I know of marriage <laughs> right now. Whew, so... It's just like I can't view God as I view my physical marriage or even as I view my husband right now. And it's just honesty. So imagine living marriage in one way, but you're trying to change your perspective not to see God how you see your marriage and your spouse. Like, which honestly could never touch and if you are married to a man that is like 100% committed to God you would feel the love of God through him but God has really been dealing with me pretty much since last year saying like just let me love you and it took a little bit for me to get here pretty much a year later like to say okay God I'm just ready for you to love me like I just want all your love the intimacy the hugs like I am your bride truly coming to you in pure white like it says in Isaiah 54 like you know I once was a widow like my pretty much saying like your husband abandoned you you once was a widow but I'm taking like God like I'm taking you back and I'm like woo, woo, you know <laughs> And it's amazing because it's like, you know the type, like, I know the type of love that I want to feel just in my physical life, like, that I've never felt, like, just 100% genuine, authentic love, and, but I, I don't want to get that from a man first, like, I want to get that from God at first, like, feel that truly from God first, and then know that the man that is giving me that physically here on earth is an extension of that godly love <laughs> y'all it makes me smile because it's like oh my god like me and god finna be woo tight right here you know like the intimacy okay and i'm not saying i don't even know the last thing i think i was saying because i had to go delete some data off my phone some videos but i think Oh, the intimacy of God. So when I was thinking, I, like, just the thought, y'all, of being intimate with God and growing in my relationship with him and allowing him to love me right where I am. Um, 
and you know we think of that in a physical way it can be in so many different perspectives but um just thinking about that in like a mental way like god get all up in my mind and renew and transform me okay what is going on with my phone i'm like deleting videos and it's <laughs> deleting like 35 minute videos and it's giving me a little bit of space okay that's more like it i'm forgetting that i delete the videos and then i gotta go empty out the trash on my phone but anyway um so one thing i could say about intimacy with god that i did not realize in the beginning and um one thing that god told me about like my year 2023 and he said this to me from october of last year um and then it was like a full circle moment of October of this year, <laughs> which we're still in today is October 26. So, and y'all, I just had a baby two days ago. Mm. Number six for me, and y'all, I'm I'm so happy. Like, first of all, God gave me a boy. He gave me a son. Right. My first was a son. My last is a son gave me four girls in between he's so handsome he's so beautiful but honestly god confirmed that for me way before i found out that we were having a boy I, and i'll never forget that moment <laughs> when he said like you need to stop doing this because you're pregnant with my son and it felt so confirming and assuring that i did not second guess it at all until we got closer to the day that we found we were gonna we were gonna find out but i was still assured it was just that and this is how you can mess up what god is doing in your life then i'm gonna go back to what i was talking about um when you just second guess a little bit because i mean i'm like i got a son and then he gave me four girls in between and so just the thought of like it's a boy it's like oh my god oh my god but i knew it but at the same time it was like ooh. but i knew it at the same time <laughs> just you know with my family like my girls my son my husband you know but i was pretty assured that we were having a boy and so even the little bit of doubt can get you in so much trouble when it comes to what god is doing in your life so you gotta be, I mean, a little bit. If God says we only need a mustard seed of faith, faith like the grain of a mustard seed, what y'all think a little bit of doubt, like the size of a mustard seed would do? Come and knock everything down. So be careful with that. And that's a lesson that I just got right there. Like you just cannot doubt God in any way at all. Not, a, it don't, it don't matter what people come to you and say because they know what your life looks like. Um, um, it just don't matter. You got to stand firm on the word of God and what he says to you and what he says your life is going to look like. So that takes me back to what I was just talking about, which full circle moments, because we went to a, I went, me and my girls went to a ladies brunch with the ladies at our church shout out to the ark i love 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 my church and everybody there um so um last and they're always amazing so last year the host of the brunch she had us write out a letter to ourselves to open in december of last year so we wrote the letters in october last year at the brunch and then she sent them out to us in December and we were we opened them and read them before the new year, right? And so I remember receiving my letter in the mail and totally forgot about everything that I wrote. Like and it was pretty much just writing a letter, hearing from God and like what God is saying to us or about us or you know, just our own letters. Um and so when I opened mine, um I read it and God was just like, enjoy your life. Like, enjoy, enjoy. So, E-N-J-O-Y, I-N-J-O-Y. 
and with joy right and so he was telling me the things that i should be enjoying as well like the different things in my life and when i opened the letter in december i kind of cried because i was like wow god you are amazing but the one thing that i did not do like he even said it to me again in january of this year of 2023 he was like enjoy your life like literally if god if God was a motivational speaker, like E.T. sitting right in front of me saying, enjoy your life. Enjoy it. Like God said, <laughs> he will never leave us or forsake us. God said, he gives us <laughs> the desires of our heart. Like literally yelling in front of me, right? Shout out to you, E.T. Because <laughs> I claim that I'm going to know him personally. Like, But, um... If God was sitting right in front of me and had somebody just sending that message to me, the belief did not click in at that moment. And um, I went back to reality, right? So even in January, he confirmed that for me. And, and throughout the months, he was like, just enjoy your life. But honestly, I didn't know how to do that. And what I did not do is go back to him, even though he told me that and ask him how do I do that what do I need to do where do I need to start what scriptures who what when like because y'all 36 years of my life 35 at that time I didn't know what it was like to enjoy life like I had literally just been living and so what made me really see that is when I moved here to Georgia like away from Florida which is Egypt <laughs> for me and um I didn't really see that until I got here and I was like, man, like, I, do I know? I don't know how to enjoy life. And that is all I was really saying and thinking in my mind. Like, I don't know how to enjoy life. I just been living <laughs> even in moments where, man, like I know it was God and stuff like that. It was like, okay, but back to reality. And I'm just now realizing that in the past month or so that that's how life has been for me and so I didn't know how to enjoy life so I didn't even I couldn't wrap my mind around what that looks like what that feels like and so I would be questioning but not necessarily asking God like God what does that look like what does that feel like because if I wanted to believe it so I could receive it I would have had to immediately go back to him but also be praying that every day and finding scripture to affirm that I am enjoying my life according to God's plan and will if God said enjoy your life crystal obviously he sees that I wasn't doing that <clears throat> and he wants me to do that for a reason and, it, and if I'm not enjoying my life, it's like, how can I receive the love of God or open up my heart to like the capacity that God needs me to be open to and my mind? Like, and I knew I was ready to do it. It was just, you know, just mental oppression. And so yeah full circle moment we get like i'm in the month of october and so much going on so many things happening but not just october like so many opportunities and relationships and friendships and i mean attending weddings and like just doing things that i would have never done before um just enjoying community and all of this stuff and I'm gonna say hold up somebody parked at my house um enjoying community and all of these great things and oh when I say moving by faith like moving by faith picking up momentum being obedient like and really un like even I was going through the hardest time in my marriage for the past six months and I think I'm gonna start talking about that now like really just the hardest time in my marriage y'all and it really just made me see life so different it made me see that I was very codependent and my husband was a crutch like my marriage was a crutch like it just made me see that I was using so many things as a reason why I couldn't do a lot of things and the number one thing was be obedient to God and I wasn't being obedient to him I mean I was literally 
Leaning, trusting, and depending on man in every way, form, or fashion. Okay, this man saw me sitting in the car. He started like blowing my car. Thank you for cleaning my yard, sir. <laughs> Claiming it in Jesus' name, y'all. You ever get so, I'm gonna come back to that. But y'all ever get so close to something and then you get super close and then it's like it's trying to be snatched. Uh oh, baby. From up under you? I'm like, I'm right here. I just need the keys to open the door, Lord. I just need the keys. I'm right here. I need this amount of money. Like, and that's it. And I'm in here. Anyway, I'll be back to tell y'all about this too. Now, I feel like I could do a lot of catching up now that I've had the baby and stuff like that. It's just a lot happening going on, but I'll be back. All right. I am back. Um, I'm back. Very interesting moment. Um never settle i will say that no matter how much you may feel pressured or pushed to do something don't settle if you feel in your mind and heart and soul that it takes just a little bit more time you wait on god do not settle and that's definitely a part of my self-care self-love walking with god intimacy with God <laughs> the capacity of God receiving God's love error okay that is what I'm going through I'm not oh I guess that would be considered my soft girl error soft woman error I have never lived like that but don't settle I'll tell y'all about that another time too um but I'm so ready to get out of that like I am out of that phase I'm not even gonna say so ready I'm, I am out of that phase of living like super masculine and strong and oh you gotta figure everything out and why me what was me like I just want to be an adult okay <laughs> some of these things that we have to do and go through in life is required as an adult so um But yeah, so what was I about to say? Um, don't settle, don't settle, don't settle, don't settle, don't settle for anything less than God's best. And and I mean that like literally, do not settle for anything less than God's best for you. All right, what else did I want to discuss in this like coming back vlog? Um, because I really enjoy doing it. Um, so uh oh okay the car stopped sir we're at a red light <laughs> um so two days ago i became a mom of six omg um and the first baby to come on his due date on his due date so god knew already because my Jeshua, his name is Jeshua. Um, we haven't seen that four centimeters since 35 weeks. Oh, and I can't stop. We have been sitting at four centimeters for since 35 weeks. I just knew he was gonna be coming. Um, at least by 37 weeks. Hold on, y'all. Um so I just knew he was going to be coming early. Oh. All right, we moving. We're moving. Um, but he got me cuz y'all like so much pressure, so much everything, uh, contractions. I wasn't sure if it was Braxton Hicks or if it was um could, like active labor, like I went in the hospital two times. <sighs> And the third time I was so hesitant, which was Monday the 23rd, I was so hesitant to even go because I'm just like, um, oh shoot, where am I? Where am I at, y'all? I mean, I know where I'm at, but I'm like, do I keep going straight? I don't keep going straight. Let me just get on style, bro. <laughs> 
because I think that's going to take me to work. <clears throat> Let's try to get to a Chipotle. Keep some food in my body. As I am committed to this. What y'all doing at me for? I can't go to one today. Ugh, so much going on at one time. But anyway, y'all, I'm totally convinced that Georgia is one of the most beautiful places when it comes to fall and fall transitions because so pretty. Like, we love it. My girls love it. Like, just the changing of, like, the leaves and the trees and all of that stuff. Coming from Florida, we don't experience stuff like that. So... And then, like, the changing of the weather, like, we get all four seasons, which is amazing for fall. And fall is so beautiful. So beautiful. And then where we live, we're more on the mountainous side of everything. So, um, like, that takes me back to, like, when I just had my baby. Um, I had him in, like, further north. I think it's north. Further north. Um, which takes you more towards like the mountains for real and okay now where am I at oh, oh wait but it's on this way um mountainous so like my views in my labor and delivery room like just the trees and the levels of trees and I definitely had to get a video of that so even right now like looking at it because we're in a very like hilly um area but just beautiful and then to experience the weather changes on top of that um yeah but oh I still gotta get gauze for the baby oh I'm probably just run and see the SM9 Farm Kroger's um, but yeah, back to my baby, Jeshua. So, y'all, I just knew when I had a boy, I was going to name him Nehemiah. And then once I got closer to, like, having him, Nehemiah just didn't settle with me no more. And then when I heard, I was reading something in the Bible, in Zechariah, where it's, well, in the, I think in the KJV, it says it in, like, his name is Joshua. Um, and the scripture is about how God changed his garments and put a like crown on his head because the devil was trying to accuse him. And Joshua was like a high priest. And he was writing the group of Nehemiah and all of them with rebuilding Jerusalem and you know leading the way in that um because if you don't know who Nehemiah is he rebuilt the gates and the walls for around the city of the city of Jerusalem so it's pretty much about rebuilding starting over things like that and so what I've realized that I've been doing, at least for my last three babies, was naming them according to what was going on in my life. Um, and not the bad stuff, just, it just so happened to be that way. Um, and it really started with Serenity, my three-year-old, um, because just, I don't know, going through some stuff and I felt like that's when my journey to peace was a, starting to happen. <laughs> It wasn't peaceful, but um, that's when it was beginning. And then um, I had Ava, and maybe that's why she's so strong right now. Um, <laughs> she wanted to fight. <laughs> um, named Ava, um, and now Jeshua. So Jeshua is just Joshua in the oops, now in the Hebrew version. Um, and I need to get off this phone. I'm trying to record, y'all. But it's the Hebrew version of Joshua. But if you read Zechariah chapter 3, I believe it's verses 1 through 4. 
you'll get the gist of it. But definitely in a phase of my life where God is like changing my garments. He's changing my garments. Like the devil cannot accuse me of anything. And so Jeshua was standing in the presence of God and angels. And the devil was right there on the right side trying to accuse him. And uh, the Lord was like, get thee behind me, okay? We are changing his garments. He put on pure white. You cannot accuse him of anything. And I'm going to need you to go on somewhere. And that's pretty much what happened. So I'll talk more about that. But anyway, let me go get me some food. Get this baby back home. And I'll chat later. <laughs>